Welcome back to Fab Automotive Detail. And you guys, in this video, we're going to take a look at the Ansel X7 Diagnostic Scanner. Let's do it. All right, you guys, so let's dive right into this. So this company reached out to me a couple months ago. I told them when they reached out to me that I wanted to test this uh, for at least a minimum of a month to make sure that I can recommend it to you guys. And then I would bring a video for it if I like it. I love it. I think it's great. I was a mechanic for close to 20 years, you guys, um, Monday through Friday. That was my that was my day-to-day -day job. I understand how scanners should work. Um, I understand quite a bit about these. So I knew what I wanted when I started using this. Um, what I look for, um, and I absolutely love it. I think they did a fantastic job, and for the price, you can't beat it. It's normally $499. Um, I just checked on my phone, because I'll have this video out very soon. Hopefully, it's still on sale, but on their website, which I'll put a link in the description of the video, it's actually on sale for $369.99, which, man, you, you just can't beat that. Um, but hopefully, like I said, when this video comes out, it's still on sale for $369.99. Links will be in the description of the video. So it comes in a nice blow molded case, got a carrying handle on it, which is great. So when you open it up, they did a very good job of putting styrofoam in it here to protect the screen. That's all it is, just a really thick piece of styrofoam. Now, I, like I said, I have been using this, so it's got fingerprints on it. It is held in here very well. I mean, you have to really pull it to get it out, so it's not gonna just fall out on you. It is a 10 inch screen with a rubber protective case all the way around it. The one thing I wish it had, wish it had a stand so you can actually stand it up. Um, but all in all, extremely happy with this. Like I said, it's Android based. So here's the diagnostic software. There it pops up right there. And I'll show you guys all this in a little bit. Um, I've already done all the updates that it needed, especially with the cars that I will ever be working on. You put your password in, which that comes in in this right here when you get the scanner. And this is where you update. Uh, only updates I have, less, or I have left are the Fuso, Opal, um, and Renault, or Renault, however you pronounce that. And then the special functions. There's dev updates, but if, when an update is due, or when there is a new one, it'll actually have a new ribbon right there. So I've done all the updates for any car that I may ever use the scanner on. We will get to that here in just a little bit. Just wanna show you everything that comes in here. So you're gonna get an owner's manual showing you exactly how to use the scanner, how to update it the first time. Inside here is going to be your OBD2 Bluetooth, which is awesome. So no wires going from here to the actual um, uh, tablet. Man, I was having a brain fart there. It is made in China, you guys. Uh, but it works really well um, and you can update it. You can plug it into your computer. Um, it just does all kinds of stuff. I haven't even gone through all the stuff that it can do. Um, so basically all you do is you take your, your OBD2 dongle, which is what this is, and you're just gonna put it in your like, computer, right? Screw it in, hook this into the car. It's gonna give this power and then it will, t it will talk to the uh, tablet, you guys, which I'll show you guys that also. And then they also have a USB adapter so that you can charge. The tablet this is the uh, for the dong or for the obd2 module is what that cords for this is for charging right here um, and that's basically about it uh, it does give you a warning when you first open it that the the tablet lithium battery needs charge more than four hours and the for the first time must be turned off when not in use don't let do not use it get less than five percent of power it needs charge for more than one hour when the battery is lower than one percent so just gives you a quick warning right there, you guys. I thought this would be great. When they reached out to me, um, I immediately say yes, because we all have cars. We all have, ha have at one point in our life had a car that had a check engine light on or ABS light turn on, or maybe you do your own oil changes and you wanna reset your oil change light. This is gonna do all that. The other stuff that this thing does, which is cool, it has hot functions. So you can, you can activate like throttle servo, um, you can do battery tests, you can do ABS bleeding. If you have a Chevy and you've ever put brakes on it, had caliper or anything like that, if you open any brake line, you gotta bleed the ABS system, your tire pressure monitoring system, you can test your injectors, there's your oil reset. Um, this is for your stability system, your immobilizer keys, you can program immobilizer keys, which is cool. Um, and this is your electronic parking brake, because a lot of new cars have electronic parking brakes, and in order to put brake pads on it, 
you have to pull the electronic parking brakes in with this right here. And then when you're done, you activate them and it pushes the piston back out and you're good to go. Let's go ahead and put it on the journey first. The journey doesn't have anything on, but I'm just gonna kind of show you in here uh, cause it's quiet but I know that my van does have a check engine light on, so we'll go check that out here in just a minute. So real quick, one thing I forgot to mention, this is a bi-directional scanner. Now, what does that mean? It means it does more than just pull codes. So this is a regular code reader. That's all this is. Look how old this is. My screen's even messed up. I've had this thing forever. This is for when I go in a parking lot back when I was turning wrenches and I just want to get a code real quick and I didn't have to go through all the crazy steps. This is just a one direction scanner. It's all it'll do. Bi-direction means that you're bringing information in, but you're also sending information back out to test, like I said, the throttle servos, your brakes, and all that stuff. You're able to go both directions with it, and that's why it's called bi-directional. All right, you guys, so what we need to do, you need to connect your cable here. On here, you're gonna have your power indicator, your vehicle indicator, which lights up when it's connected, to the, when it's actually talking to the computer, your Bluetooth indicator, and then USB if your USB is connected here. Um, all cars, the OBD2 connectors in a different spot. Most are right here. This one's right above the emergency uh, brake. But all you gotta do is make sure you have it facing the right direction. It'll beep when I plug it in. Actually, let me turn the ignition on first. We'll have to deal with the beeping for just a minute. Okay, so now the ignition's on, we're just gonna plug this in. Okay, it beeped, we have power, we have Bluetooth, and the vehicle is talking to it. I'll show you that here in just a second. I'm gonna shut the door so we don't have to listen to the beeping right here shows you you are connected to the vehicle see the green check mark right there on the vehicle it means we're good to go i want to put this right here so hopefully you guys can see it maybe let's just do it like this see if you guys can see that probably not we'll try it so we're going to diagnose okay you can either manually enter what you want Vehicle-wise, American, Asian, China, Australia, Europe, or click VIN and let it auto-detect the VIN for you. So it's going to tell you what vehicle you are in, and that is correct. It is a Chrysler, so it's a Dodge Journey. We're communicating here, right here. You can verify your VIN number, your make and model, and what engine is in the car. Non-turbo, gasoline engine. Hit OK. OK. System selection. And we're going to go all these modules. You have the PCM powertrain control module, TCM transmission control module, analog brakes, your airbags, your body control module, instrument cluster, your radio, your tire pressure monitoring, amplifier. All these modules that are in these new cars is all offered on this, which is really cool. Now I'm going to click this powertrain control module. And we should see that blue right there. That's the vehicle lighting up. It is communicating with the vehicle. We are in. So here you got module information. It's going to give you the serial number and everything of your module error code, read data stream, read configuration, freeze frame, which is where if you have a check engine light that comes on, it'll freeze all the live data and save it. So you can look at you know what the uh, engine coolant temperature look like, what the map sensor look like, all that good stuff. Um, OBD2 monitors, special functions, and actuation tests where you can activate stuff. Okay, so error code. Okay, so we're gonna read fault code. There shouldn't be any in this. Okay, no codes present, which I knew there wasn't going to be. But what I want to show you guys, so go to special functions. Let's see what this does. So you have your cam crank relearn. If you replace a camshaft sensor, crankshaft sensor, you can learn your electronic throttle control if you replace your throttle body. Um, the oil change indicator, reset it. Right pinion factor, don't have to worry about that on that because this one doesn't have it. Um, another cam crank relearn. Actually, these are all the same. I don't know why they doubled them up here on this screen. And then your actuation test. This is what makes it a bi-directional scanner. You can do all this stuff. Uh, oxygen sensors, fuel injector, one, two, three, four. I don't know why there's not six on here. Um, radiator condenser cooling fan. You can activate your fans, high and low speeds, your purge valve for your EVAP system. I mean, all kinds of stuff. Dual speed oil pump, vacuum pump relays, variable valve timing phasers if you replace them. I mean, this thing is really, really cool for what it costs. Now, data stream is where I, what I use the most um, as a mechanic. Now what data stream is, you can actually watch live data as you're driving the car around or in the shop while you're sitting still. You can pick what you want um, on this one. So like map vacuum, map volts, engine speed, target idle speed, uh, engine runtime, 
but just for the sake of this video, we've picked a couple. Okay, so here it is. Here's your current values and what your units are, right? Um, if you want to graph it, you just click on that and it's going to graph it as you're driving. What graphing is good for is if you're looking for like ABS wheel speed sensors. Um, if you have like an erratic code and you see that's the, the uh, needle going up and down, up and down, up and down the graph, um, not the needle, but you know what I'm talking about, up and down the graph, that usually means that your wheel speed uh, tone ring on your ABS hub is probably cracked or the magnet is broken like on GMs. Um, if it has just an intermittent where every now and then it goes up, it goes down, and then it looks good, and all of a sudden it goes up and goes down, that's usually a wheel speed sensor. But how I know is from looking at the graphs all the time. But anyways, that type of stuff is more for the professional. Um, but if you get to used to using a scanner like this, even as a DIYer at home working on your own vehicles, you sure can diagnose a lot of stuff um, on your own. Now let's go ahead and look at the hot function. Now I can't do anything on the hot function because I don't need to activate anything. But under the hot function, here's your screen, right? And it's gonna have everything you want to do quickly. This is what the hot function's for. Anything you wanna do quickly on the car. If you wanna replace throttle body and relearn it, there you go. If you wanna check your injectors, reset your oil light, blah, 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 blah. On here's your update manager, um, quick support, TDC query. What that means is if you have a generic fault code that just comes up and doesn't give you a definition, all the fault codes are in here um, that are basically all your generic codes. So like P0050, heat auction sensor, heater circuit control circuit, bank two sensor one, uh, but you can look it up if it doesn't give you it. Now the cool thing about this, and I'm hoping that I can show you guys, um, it does take cameras, it does take cameras. It does take pictures. It has a video. It does video and pictures, which is cool. You can play your data back that you just test drove uh, in case you don't, you don't want to watch it while you're driving so you don't crash, even though I always did, but they say not to. Um, your apps, you can write a report. Um, your diagnosis history, which is cool. But what I want to show you is I will take you out um, in the truck that has a fault code and show you what it does when it sees an actual fault code. All right, you guys. So we are in the truck. I did the uh, VIN scan already, the work van. It is a Sprinter. 906 diesel engine left hand steering electronic transmission control you have system test quick test quick test is going to read every single module we're just going to go to the system test now here it doesn't look like there's a lot right it's like oh man that journey had a lot more now they just do it different on the european um, so then once you hit drive then you have your engine control module transfer case transmission all that good stuff so we want the ecm and then all we want to do is we want to read the codes i've already done all this Read the codes. There's going to be several, as you can see. I know that that one's an auction sensor code there. But all these are history. This one is the only present one, 2953. Now what we can do, um, we can click on repair help if we were near internet. We're not near internet right now. So, and, and what I'll do is I'll take you online so you can actually you know, see what people are saying about that specific fault code. Uh, but what, you want, what I want to do here, we can just scan it, do that. It's going to screenshot it by clicking that button right there, that square. And we can go in here, we can delete them. So we're going to erase the codes. And then do you want to erase the fault code? It's going to make sure you really want to. Click yes. Fault codes erased successfully. Click OK. And then go back in and make sure they are gone. No fault codes are present. Okay. So then what we're going to do, we're going to go back home. And then what we can do, we can actually go in here. Oh, hang on. Uh, data manager and images. So here are the fault codes we just looked at, right? So that way I remember, so 2953. Now you don't have to erase your codes. I just did it because I don't wanna go back in there in a little bit to do it. So 2953, DTC query. And then we're gonna click the little magnifier search button. It's P, number 2953. And then click search and nothing comes up. What the heck? Maybe I put that in wrong. That's what happens when you do stuff live. Uh, images. No, 2953, I did put that in right. So let's try the 2243. That should be an auction sensor. I just know that from all the years of turn wrenches. Uh, 2243. P2243. Yep, there we go. So P2243. O2 sensor reference voltage circuit open bank one sensor one. So that's what that fault code is, right? Okay, so let's close this. Okay. 
and we'll go back to data manager. Let's look up one more and see if it'll pull it up. 2201. I know this is kind of a stupid way to do it. That's the only thing I don't like about the scanner is that it doesn't tell you the fault codes on the screen. You have to look them up. I don't know why my mirror is doing that. This one is uh, Sensor Circuit Range Performance Bank 1. Basically the same code. I don't know why it's like nitrous oxide. <laughs> but anyway, same thing basically. So we know we, we did delete them. Um, but this the scanner is very nice. I, I really do like it. Uh, there's tons of stuff to it. Here's your settings. Um, because if you go to settings, uh, you can change your search engine to Google or whatever the heck that is. Um, you can title your reports if you want to make a report for somebody. You can print off the diagnostic codes if you have a Bluetooth printer. Um, so yeah, change your sit, um, units from metric to imperial. And then you can set up your user, your function list. I mean, there's tons of stuff on here. And like I said, it is Android based. So if we just exit out of here, right? And we go up. Now here is all the normal stuff you see on anything that's Android. You got the Play Store, you got music, gallery, FM radio, uh, settings, um, pretty much anything and everything. Your clock, your browser. Let's see if we can hook to the internet. We're kind of far away from my internet right now. So it's probably, oh it did. Okay. So this takes you directly to the website. This is the Ansel X7. And it's going to tell you everything you need to know about it. It takes you directly there. But if we want to go to YouTube, let's just see. Hey, 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 look here. YouTube pops up. There it is. There's videos on YouTube. This scanner is very nice. All right, you guys, so there you go on the Ansel X7. It's a fantastic little scanner, you guys. And for the price, you can't beat it. It has so many functions uh, for the money that you're going to spend. I can tell you that I have a Snap-on scanner behind you guys over there. Um, that does pretty much the same thing. Now, don't get me wrong, the Snap-on definitely gets more in depth, um, but it, I think I paid $2,400 for it, I think. Uh, so you see the price difference right there, about $2,000 cheaper. I understand why they're expensive, but this company here, Ansel, nice scanner, what a scanner for the price you're gonna pay. It can do every single thing that you want it to do as a DIYer and pretty much as a professional. Um, the only thing I would change, I would like a stand on the back, um, and then I would like when you look at the DTCs for it to just to show you there, just not the numbers. So you don't have to go back and look. That's my only complaints on this. Other than that, it's decently fast. It's not the fastest, it's not the slowest I've had. Um, it's just kind of like right in the middle. Um, and it does exactly what I want it to do. Most people that are DIYers want these for changing the oil, the oil reset, um, uh, checking the check engine light, maybe the ABS light, maybe the airbag light or something like that. Just then kind of have an idea of what's going on with their car. And they can look it up online and uh, see if anybody can help on YouTube or whatever. Um, and maybe they'll find the fix for their car easy just by having the scanner. But if you're a professional and you rely on data stream like I did for all those years, this is great. It graphs it out for you. Um, it does what all the high-end scanners do, which is all you can really ask for. I have a scanner that's only costing you at full price about $500. Um, once again, I will put a link in the description on the video where you guys can find um, this scanner. And I hopefully will have this video out in two days from now. Um, and you guys will be able to hopefully get it while it's on sale for 369 because that's just an amazing deal for something this in-depth when it comes to a bi-directional scanner. So I want to say thank you guys so much for watching this video and checking it out. I want to say thank you to Ansel for sending this to me uh, to let me test out. I really appreciate it. I, I love it. It's a great little machine, and every time I've needed it, it has not let me down yet. Um, and if you guys enjoyed the video and this video was helpful, give me a thumbs up, hit that subscribe button, join the Fab family. We'd love to have you. We'll see you in the next video.